Hi, I'm Marcus Ryle, and in this video I'd like to talk to you about the Oberheim OB-8 and also do some comparisons with the new Oberheim OB-X-8. The OB series started with the OB-X in 1979, followed by the OB-X-A in 1981, and finally the OB-8 in 1983. We've covered the OB-X and the OB-X-A in other videos, so here we're going to focus on the OB-8 and why it's different from the others. As the OB series evolved from the OBX to the OBXA, it also evolved quite a bit in complexity. While the OBX had 109 trimmers or adjustments internally, the OBXA ballooned to 145 adjustments in order to properly adjust all of the voice and split and double features. This started to become a bit problematic, both in production and in reliability in the field, because there were so many adjustments that affected the sound of the synthesizer. So with the OB-8, one of the goals was to try to reduce the amount of calibrations and make the system smarter in how those calibrations were performed. Although the OB-8 voice architecture is very similar to the OB-XA, the number of adjustments internally was reduced from 145 down to 86. In addition, these calibrations were able to be assisted by the microprocessor, which made the OB-8 much easier to calibrate than its predecessors and also made it more stable. Another important advancement in the OB-8 was having several of the control voltage signals be able to be generated in software. This allowed for a lot of flexible features to be added that were never before possible in the OB series. The control voltage signals from the bend box, as well as the modulation section and portamento, now being software generated, enabled for a lot of additional features. With the addition of so many new features in the OB-8, we had to come up with a way to control them. And we didn't want to add a lot of extra knobs and switches and complexity to how the front panel already operated, since it was already well suited for performance. So we came up with the feature of page two. Page two was simply a way to layer another set of controls on the knobs and buttons of the front panel, effectively being able to double the amount of parameters that could be adjusted. On the OB-8, you select page two by pressing the cord slash page two button twice. And then the front panel controls give you the additional functions. These functions were labeled in blue on the panel of the OB-8 so that you could try to remember where they existed. In fact, very early OB-8s didn't have any screening for page two, which made it a little more difficult to keep track of where the parameters were. The OBX-8 replicates 100% of the features of the OB-8, maintaining the same analog signal path, as well as all of the software-controlled modulation. But accessing page two features on the OBX-8 is actually quite a bit simpler than the OB-8 due to the addition of the OLED display. The page two features can also still be accessed from the panel, like on the OB-8 if you prefer. But by having them also in the display means if you want, you can leave the control panel on its page one settings, enabling you to edit page two and page one parameters at the same time. The OB-8 has a 14-bit DAC for generating its control voltages, which gives you a pitch resolution of 1 128th of a semitone. And this pitch control accuracy is used to ensure that the oscillator tracking stays in tune across the entire keyboard. The OBX and OBXA only would tune the pitch of the oscillators on the high C of the keyboard. And the tracking from that point was dependent on how the internal trimmers were set. But with the OB8, multiple frequencies are calibrated from the microprocessor and the tracking is calibrated in software. This enabled the OB-8 to always sound precisely in tune over its entire range. Being perfectly in tune isn't always desirable in an analog synthesizer, so the OB-8 added an important feature called voice detune. This feature let you adjust the amount of detuning you wanted per voice, essentially decalibrating the oscillators, and was really useful especially in unison presets in order to have all of the oscillators beating in a nice random fashion. Here's an example of a simple sawtooth patch in unison mode where you'll hear how in tune all the oscillators are. But if I would like to detune it, I can just go to page two, turn up the voice detune. Now we'll go through some of the presets of the OB-8. 
Like its predecessor, the OBXA, the OB8 has 120 memory locations, of which 104 were filled with factory presets. We are just going to go through a few of these so that we can focus on the features that are unique to the OB8 and show how those also are supported in the OBX8. Of course, many of the presets are traditional Oberheim sounds, starting with A1. A1 has been a brass ensemble preset on all of the OB series, but it's not the same preset with each unit since as the features evolved, so did the preset settings. Now let's listen to preset A2 called Saint Genevieve, which shows off a lot of the page two features. Saint Genevieve happens to be the birthplace of Michel Doidic, who was one of the principal engineers of Oberheim during the OB era. And he was also the principal architect of the page two features. And he wanted to make a preset that would show off many of the new capabilities that were in the OB8. So Saint Genevieve uses the delayed LFO feature so that vibrato can fade in over time. And it also uses the LFO envelope mod feature to allow one of the delay envelopes to control the speed of the LFO. And lastly, it uses keyboard tracking on the LFO so that the higher notes have a little higher vibrato than the low notes. And it sounds like this. Preset CD4 is called Pulse Width Mod, and it shows off a couple other new features of the OB8. First off, it uses the LFO in keyboard trigger mode, which lets you have the LFO wave shape start at a specific point in its waveform every time you press a new key. In this case, it's using a triangle wave set to start at its peak and then ramp downward. It's also using pulse width modulation, which did exist on all the other OBs, but in the case of the OB8, enables you to go past 100% and allow the oscillator to be turned off with the full amount of modulation. So in this case, what we have is oscillator 2 as a pulse wave starting fully off and then becoming a square wave, while oscillator 1 is a triangle wave, which is another new waveform of the OB8 so that you have a pure tone at the same time as you hear oscillator 2 fading in with the pulse width modulation. And it sounds like this. Preset ABD1 is called Decelerate, and it utilizes the ability to control the LFO speed with one of the delay envelopes. In this case, we're gonna slow down the LFO as we hold notes down, while at the same time, we're gonna use the filter envelope feature to sweep the frequency of oscillator two while it's in sync, which gives you that distinct uh, sync oscillator sound. Preset AB7 is called Quantized LFO, and it utilizes a new feature of the OB8 where you can have the LFO stepped in semitones when modulating pitch of the oscillators. This preset's using a sawtooth wave that's ramping up, so you'll hear oscillator 2 chromatically going up with the ramp of the sawtooth wave. You'll also hear oscillator 1 ramping down because it's using the invert modulation feature of page two so that oscillator one is modulated with the inverse sawtooth wave while oscillator two is being modulated by the positive going sawtooth wave. It's also got a long release and a lot of resonance so you'll have to wait a while for the sound to decay.
preset BD6 is called Tremolo Res, and it utilizes a new feature of the OB8 that did not exist on the OBX and OBXA, and that is volume mod. This one extra button on the front panel allows the depth two control to control how much of the LFO is modulating the final VCA where the voices are summed, and it's useful for tremolo type sounds like this. Next up is D1, which is called Delayed Octave, and it uses yet another new feature of the OB-8. On the OB-8, you have three waveforms per oscillator instead of just two from the OBX and OBXA. The third waveform is a triangle wave, but there's also a fourth mode, which is to have the sawtooth and pulse on at the same time. When you do that, you actually create a new composite waveform, which looks like two sawtooth oscillators being combined. If the pulse wave is exactly 50% or a square wave, what happens is that you see the sawtooth wave ramp up twice. That's because the beginning of the sawtooth is ramping up from a negative voltage to zero while the pulse wave or square wave is high or positive voltage. And then halfway through the waveform, when the square wave drops low, the sawtooth returns back to zero and ramps up again. So it sounds like an octave higher sawtooth wave or a second harmonic, which is what happens when two oscillators that both have a sawtooth wave are exactly 180 degrees out of phase. If you do pulse width modulation, instead of seeing on the waveform a pulse wave combined with a saw, you see the movement of that extra falling edge of the sawtooth moving across the phase of the sawtooth. So the result is kind of like two oscillators that are both on sawtooth that are slightly detuned. And the detune amount is effectively the amount of pulse width modulation or speed of pulse width modulation that you are applying to the oscillators. In this preset, we're also using the delay of the pulse width modulation. So it starts out with the pulse wave exactly at 50%. We hear that upper octave and then the modulation of pulse width ramps in and we hear the lower octave come into play and the movement of the pulse width modulation. And it sounds like this. The OB-8 introduced a number of new portamento modes that were not available on the OBX and OBXA, and I'm going to cover a few of them here from the factory presets. This preset is using what's called equal time portamento, which will result in linear portamento being automatically adjusted so that the amount of time it takes to glide from one note to another is the same regardless of the interval. It's also using the quantized portamento feature, which causes the portamento glide to be quantized to semitones or a stepped chromatic scale rather than a continuous smooth pitch change. Since this preset's using quantize as well as equal time, you'll hear the chromatic scale's speed change depending on the interval that the oscillator is having to portamento from. This preset also uses the sample and hold feature of the LFO to modulate the filter in a random stepped sequence and has a long decay and a lot of resonance. And it sounds like this. Portamento can sometimes seem to be a random effect, and that's because the glide is going to start from whatever pitch that particular voice was at previously. So depending on what other notes you've played, that's going to determine where the glide might come from. So I could play the same note over and over, and if all the voices were starting from a different place, since the voices rotate in assignment on the OB-8, we'll hear the glide come from different places. Now that I've played the same note eight times, I have all voices on that same B-flat. So now if I play a chord, we're going to hear everything glide from the same note. Now let's do the same thing on the OBX8.
There's a number of new portamento features in the OB8. I'm just going to show you one more, which is called Bend Portamento. And this is a way to have a portamento type sound that doesn't have the random aspect of coming from wherever a voice was previously. Instead, you can preset an interval from up to one octave below the note you play to an octave and a half above the note you play and have the portamento always glide from that note. It's a little bit like an envelope generator modulation since it's always going to ramp in a particular way with every note that is triggered. This preset's called Tuned Portamento, CD1, and it has the two oscillators tuned a fifth apart, and it has the portamento bend going from one octave below the note you play to the note that you are playing. It's also a unison preset, so we can hear that all the voices are gliding together. And here's one more not particularly useful preset. It's called Whippets. It's in CD5, and it's using a down sawtooth to modulate the pitch of the oscillators, and also using the Mod 2 delay envelope to control the speed of the LFO so that it slows down over time. And it sounds like this. So that's just a few simple examples of the OB8 factory presets and how they compare on the OBX8. Thanks for watching.